Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Olivia. Um, today, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step walkthrough to the best of my ability of how to do the figure eight stitch on your afghan loom. Let's go ahead and get started. <music> Okay, so all you're going to need is your afghan loom, of course, yarn of your choice. This is the Bernat Blanket Yarn. It is a weight 6 in the color Sailor's Delight. Anything less than a weight 6, it's going to make your yarn, your blanket look holier. Anything bigger than a weight 6 is going to make it a little bit harder to do, but it's not impossible. You're going to need a hook. This is the hook that comes with your afghan loom, and this is optional, but this is just a ink pen barrel where everything's been taken out of it to thread through your yarn okay so our first step that i want to walk you through is how to label your pegs because for this specific blanket pattern you have to skip pegs the reason why you skip pegs is if you use every single peg that's on here one the ends will not lay right and your stitches will lay on top of one another and it won't lay flat. So you have to skip a specific amount in order for it to be perfect. I do not know exactly why we skip the pegs we skip, but this is just the universal pegs that we go into. So on each end, you're going to skip your first four. And the ones that we skip are the ones that we mark. So your first four on this end and your, your last four on this end, you're gonna mark those. Now there are 20 pegs marked on each side, which means you should have 40 pegs in total skipped. So after you mark your four pegs, you're going to count six pegs. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna mark your seventh peg and you're gonna do that on both sides. You're gonna mark your seventh peg. Then you're going to continue and count two and mark your third until you get to your 11th peg. You're going to do that on both sides. So you're going to one, two, mark three, one, two, mark three, one, two, mark three, until you get to your 11th mark. Then when you get to your 11th mark, you're going to count three, mark your fourth one. Don't know exactly why you're supposed to do this, but it is how it's supposed to be done. So that's just how we do it. And then after you, mark, you do the three and you mark your 12th one, you go back to your count two, mark three, count two, mark three, until you get to 16. So there are four at the end and then 16 throughout on both sides. And you'll see that both circles in the middle do not have any markings. So you should have the markings end about at the same spot, if that makes any sense. And I will leave it like this for a second so you can pause the video and make sure that you have all the right pegs marked. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and thread my yarn through my pin because it's a lot easier and it's gonna make this process go a little bit faster. This is a yarn threader. I know it's kind of hard to see. It's just a thin piece of wire. You can get these at craft stores. Um, I don't know exactly how much they cost because these were gifted to me. You're just gonna slide it through your ink pen like that. Make sure you hold it so that it doesn't go anywhere. You're gonna take your yarn, slide it through the loop, and I'm just gonna do this, cause I'm holding on to it. You're gonna pull it, make sure that it gets caught in that notch, and then you're just gonna slide it through your pin, take it off, and then your pin is ready to go. All right, so first thing is we're gonna start with a slip knot. This is how I do my slip knots. I wrap it around my fingers, grab it through, make a slip knot. It's super easy. Then you're going to take it. You're going to make sure that your tail is on the inside of your loom. And you're going to put your slip knot on your first peg and tighten it. You want to make sure that the tail is on the inside. So just make sure you tighten it so that it's going to look like this on your first peg. Then you're going to make sure that you wrap the opposite side of the way it is going. So if you see it's coming from my right side, I'm gonna make sure to wrap it on the left side from the, the first one. So you're gonna wrap it 
Now it's coming from the right side. I'm gonna make sure it goes to the left. You're just gonna to continue to do this on all your pegs that are not marked. So we're right here. We're gonna make sure that we go to this one. And instead of wrapping this one, we're gonna skip it. And we're just gonna to continue to wrap like this. So we'll skip the black marked one and just continue. I'll be back when I'm finished. All right, so we got our first row done. That, this is what your first row is gonna look like. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna push all of these down. You're just gonna push them down, make them flat. Just make sure. All right, so now when you go on to your second row, you're going to wrap the opposite and go right back around. And you're going to skip this peg. This peg is the one you ended on. You're going to skip it. And you're just going to continue right back around and do your second row. And you're just going to keep going, making sure that you skip our marked pegs. And I will see you when we get back to our second row. All right, so now we finish our second row. This is what all of your pegs are gonna look like. They're gonna have two loops. Now, on this one, it's only gonna have one and we're not gonna do this one. We'll leave this one alone. And for every other row that you do, they will alternate. So this peg and this peg, your starting peg and your, your starting peg, sorry, you can't see it. Starting peg and your ending peg are going to alternate in which ones only have one loop. And that is just so that the ends look nice and even. So you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna take your hook and you're just gonna start looping. Oh, let me make sure that this is the right way. You're just going to start looping your bottom stitch over your top stitch. And this, my tail is not working with me, but give me just a second. There we go. Okay, so you're going to take your bottom stitch, flip it over your top stitch. And you're going to continue to do this. Now, in the video that I watched, she said that your bottom stitch, your first stitch, is always gonna be the loosest. I have not found a way to tighten it yet, but if I do find a video on how to tighten the bottom stitch, I will do a video on it. But this is what you're gonna do all the way around. You're just gonna continue to do this. And if you want to, you can alternate sides, and then you can do this side a couple times, and that side a couple times. It doesn't really matter as long as you are flipping your stitches over one another and then as you go you can push them down or you can wait till the end and push them all down so we're just going to continue to do that and I'll be back when I have them all flipped all right and when you're done this is what your stitches are going to look like when they're all wrapped this is what your pegs are going to look like they're all going to have just one single loop you're going to continue and do your third row now like I said you're going to skip this one because this is the one you left off on it wrapped this way, so I'm gonna make sure that it wraps the opposite, and you're just going to continue your rows for however long you want your blanket to be. Now, this blanket will be about 60 inches wide, even though you are not using every single peg on this, it still does come out to be 60 inches wide. So I would make it about 50 inches long, which is a normal size for a throw blanket, um, but anything shorter, it's going to look oblong and it's going to not look right. So I would do about 50 inches long. Um, I don't know exactly how many rows that is, but you can always keep a measuring tape and every 20 or something rows just keep an eye on your measurements 
So you're just gonna continue to wrap your yarn around and then take your hook and flip all of your rows. You're gonna to continue to do this for however long you want your blanket, okay? So you'll continue to do that. And then the next part of this video, we'll be showing you how to cast off. Okay, so now you need to cast off and I've already kind of started just so I can um, remember how to do it. But you're gonna start on this end that does not have the working yarn. If you start on the end that has the working yarn, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to finish it properly. So you're gonna start on this end like I said, I've already done some, but you're going to start on this peg. You're going to start on your first peg. You're going to wrap it over and you're going to pull your bottom loop through the top and then you're going to attach it to the next one. So if you can see, I have my top loop. I'm going to pull, grab my second loop, pull it through to where the bottom one is the only one on my peg now. And I'm going to take it and attach it to my next one. So then you're just gonna continue. You're gonna pull, you're gonna go through your top peg, grab your bottom peg, pull through. This is only a little bit more difficult for mine because I don't have as much on, but then you're gonna take it and attach it to the next one, okay? So your top one through, you're going to grab your bottom one, pull it through. Like I said, this is difficult for me because I don't have as much. And then you're going to attach it to your next one. And you're gonna to continue to do that. I'll do it one more time. You're gonna go through your top one, grab your bottom one, pull it through, you, like I said, you're not gonna have this problem because you're gonna have a lot more rows than I am. You're gonna take your top one, the last one you had, put it onto the next. Grab through, pull it onto the next. Onto the next. And you're just gonna continue to do that, all right? And I'll show you all what to do at the end. All right, so after we're gonna we're on our last couple of rows, so we're just gonna make sure that we're taking them and doing them the way we're supposed to. All right. Like I said, I'm gonna keep saying this is harder for me because I don't have as many rows on it as you will. So. And just be careful when you do that because you can lose your stitch when you do it like I did. Um, all right, so you're on our last one. You're gonna take it through. Don't do it like I keep doing, but you're just gonna take it, you're gonna attach it. So this is your last one, all right? Make sure, I'm trying to make sure I got you in view. You just do it like normal. You just take through the top loop under pull it off this part you want to be very careful um the other video says to hold it but if you just push it back on your loop like this and you kind of tug and just hold it you should be okay so you're just going to take it and you're going to grab it from the bottom and then it's off of your loop so then you're just gonna take it and wrap through and a slip knot or whatever it's called. I, I don't have a proper way of doing it, but you're gonna take your yarn through and just tie it off like that and then this end you'll tuck through and then you can tuck your tails and that's basically it that's how you do the figure eight stitch